Well, recent stories about COVID experiments at the famous Boston University lab raised a lot of eyebrows and concerns about the work that's going on inside the institution. New at six, it's tonight's Question Everything. I went to investigate what exactly happened at the BU lab and should we be worried? Experts slam Boston Lab. New deadly Omicron strain. 80% kill rate in mice. BU issued a statement saying nothing more dangerous had been created, but they also admitted they had not asked the National Institutes of Health for permission because they weren't required to do that. So what exactly happened at the BU lab? And should we be worried about it? What if it gets out? I didn't really buy it, to be honest. Sounds uh, a little fishy. Anything people do in lab makes me nervous because I feel like they're just playing with things and it could like, like, like mess with our lives. Probably makes me a little angry because I don't know whether or not to think there's legitimacy to what I'm reading there or if it's just a tabloid article. This is a very urgent problem because there are many labs around the world that are starting to conduct this type of research. And Dr. Alina Chan is a researcher in gene therapy at the Broad Institute, affiliated with MIT and Harvard. It seems that we really need to be looking more carefully at this sort of virological research where people are taking new viruses and recombining them in the lab, and these could potentially have really grave consequences. She points out the work they do at the BU lab is absolutely necessary, but she had questions. What was your first reaction? So my, my first, the first thing I did was to go read the paper itself because you want to see if the reporting is correct. And immediately I realized that the scientists had been uh, I think careless in, in how they wrote the paper. So there was a single line they wrote that was taken out of context. This is the BU lab, the National Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratories, or the needle for short. After the pandemic, Dr. Chan asks, when it comes to the riskiest research, should a relatively small number of people here be allowed to greenlight those experiments in a major city? Just miles from an international airport, or should the public be told about it in advance? I'm a person, I'm a human, and I live in Boston, so <laughs> I also will suffer the consequences if there is a dangerous pathogen that leaks from the needle. I am interested to know what other research they might be doing in there. So what were they doing? Using a mix of federal and university funds with the approval of a BU Biosafety Committee and the Boston Public Health Commission, they took a small part of Omicron and added it to the original coronavirus. Yes, 80% of mice died, but it was less deadly than the original, which killed 100%. Still sounds kind of alarming, right? Not all mixing and matching viruses is really dangerous research. Enter Professor Nicholas Evans, an expert in public health ethics at UMass Lowell. He's advised the NIH on what the ethics of experiments should be. He has full faith in the BU lab. I have been critical of other laboratories in the past. I have seen what people in the needle do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and as far as I know, uh, there has been no evidence that the researchers in the needle uh, acting in a way that is jeopardizing the public safety. In fact, he calls this piece of research run of the mill. Still, the federal government is investigating whether BU should have told the NIH what they were doing. I think that uh, the federal government um, has uh, is now has a controversy on their hands. And the Boston Public Health Commission's looking to make sure all safety protocols were followed. We also have a half century of engineering of these laboratories to really make them airtight, literally, uh, against the possibility of releasing infectious diseases. What's the lesson from all of this? That science doesn't work like the movie Contagion. One of the groups that has failed us the most in this respect is Hollywood. Dr. Chan says now, post-corona, the entire scientific community has to take more responsibility. I don't think that the answer is to become more secretive and more afraid of talking to the public. So, David, both scientists agree transparency yeah. and safety is what should happen, that those headlines that were scary were inaccurate, but that labs like the BU lab should be more open with the federal government and the public about what they're working on. And the director of The Needle declined to be interviewed for this story, but we'll keep asking questions. Yeah, transparency was the word I was thinking of because right away it's like, well, that's not what's happening. Okay, well, then tell us in a way that we understand what really is happening, which is what that story did. So, great job. Thanks. That's awesome. And if you have a question that you want us to answer, email us. Question everything at cbsboston.com or you can tweet us using the hashtag WBZ question everything.